Bienvenidos a esta reunión de la Mesa Directiva del Distrito Escolar de San Mateo Foster City. Tenemos un intérprete para los participantes que necesitan traducción al español. Para escuchar la junta en español, presione el icono del mundo en su pantalla. Muchas gracias. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the San Mateo Foster City School District regular board meeting. Tonight is April 25th, 2024, and I'm calling the meeting to order at 5.32 p.m. We will go into item 2A, which is the flag salute. So please stand and join me for the pledge. The United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Sorry, President Proctor. Could you repeat that, please? Yes. It's, um, the TV doesn't show anything on Zoom on the like the portable TV, so it's saying, "Do we want to oh. join the Zoom meeting?" Yes, I, I will take care of that right now. Thank you. Going to roll call, Trustee. Yes. Here. Here. Okay. Um, item 2C, approval of agenda for tonight's meeting. Tonight's agenda. Trustee Watkins for the motion and Trustee Trin for the second. Uh, we'll do a roll call. Uh, President Foster, we do have two uh, staff request changes. Yeah. Let's hear them. Patrick. <laughs> yes, can we uh, remove item 5B5? And we're also going to ask that you um, move 5A2 to action um, off the consent agenda. Oh, okay, I was going to do that when we got to consent, but let's do it now. Okay, so... Um, so we have two things here, <laughs> two things. So request to pull. Apologize for Five, eight, five, five, eight, two, and five, B. Five, B, five to be pulled, okay. um, removed from the agenda. Okay, so I can make a motion again. So a motion to approve the agenda, removing five, B, five completely from the agenda this evening and moving five, A, two off the consent agenda to board discussion later. Thank you, Trustee Watkins for the motion and Trustee Trin for the second. Uh, we'll do roll call vote. Uh, Trustee Kim. Aye. Trustee Watkins? Yes. Trustee Trin? Yes. Trustee Brooks? Yes. And I also vote yes. Thank you. That has been approved. We will move on to item 3A, which is a special performance from the Abbott Complex um, for Matilda. So please join us. Thank you, everybody. My name is Marcella McCollum. Uh, I am here on behalf of Director Fain, who unfortunately was not able to attend. He's uh, working on a couple of other things. We're perfecting Matilda. We'd like to invite you all to come and see the show. And so this is, we've got Jillian and Quinn, two of our stars uh, of Matilda, and they're going to just perform a small snippet so that you can get a sense of what we're doing. Um, so thank you to the district for letting us come and perform. <laughs> uh, 
So if any of you guys have ever seen Matilda, um, I play Miss Honey and I play Miss Punchbowl. Um, so in the scene, if you guys have ever seen the movie or the musical, um, I am trying to talk to Miss Trunchbull about um, why Matilda should be moved up because of how smart she is. And so that's kind of setting the scene here. And please forgive me, we're working with tracks. So if you see me pull out my phone and click onto a new track, just ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, just knock on the door. Don't be pathetic. Knock on the door, Jenny. There's nothing to fear. You're being pathetic. It's just a door. You've seen one before. Just knock on the door. It's just trying to hide. Standing outside the principal's office. Like a little girl. It's just pathetic. Hesitating and shaking, you should be embarrassed. You're not a little girl, it's just pathetic. Knock on the door, Jenny. What are you waiting for? Just knock on the door. Perhaps I'll wait, she's probably having a meeting or something. I want to be interrupted in any portion in these situations. A sensible one should avoid confrontation when possible. I'll come back later. like a wet tissue. Get on with it. Well, yes, Miss Trunchbull. There's, in, 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 in my class, that is, there's this little girl named Matilda Wormwood. Daughter of Mr. Harry Wormwood, who owns Wormwood Motors. Excellent man. Told me to watch out for the brat, though. Said she's a real wart. Oh, no, Miss Trunchbull. I don't think Matilda Wormwood's that type of child at all. What is the school motto, Miss Honey? Bambinatum est magitum. Bambinatum est magitum. Children are maggots. <laughs> In fact, it must have been her who put that stink bomb under my desk this morning. I'll have her for that. Thank you for suggesting it. But, but I didn't. Miss Trunchbull, Matilda Wormwood is a genius. Nonsense. Haven't I just told you she's a gangster. But, 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 but she knows her times tables. So she's learned a few tricks. But she can read. So can I. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Trunchbull, it, it is in my opinion that this little girl should be placed in the top form with the 11 year olds. What? But she is a squib, a shrimp, an unhatched tadpole. We cannot just place her with the 11-year-olds. What kind of society would that be? What about the rules? Honey, rules. I, I, I believe that Matilda Wormwood is an exception to the rules. An exception to the rules in my school.
Thank you to our actors and please join us May 17th through 19th. Uh, tickets are on sale now. <laughs> upon any matter that has not been included and in public, publicly posted on the agenda, except under limited circumstances as permitted by law. The board may refer matters raised in this forum to staff for investigation and or action where appropriate. Please limit your statements to three minutes. Um, I have two um, blue things here. If anyone wants to um, speak during this time, you can fill out another blue slip. Um, we'll start with um, in-person comments and then we'll go to Zoom. So uh, we'll start with Silas Moriente, and you can come up to this podium here. Good evening, members of the board, fellow staff, and families of the San Mateo Foster City School District. My name is Silas Moriente, and I love the work I do as a paraeducator. I am a transgender Jewish American, and my lived experience and religious obligation as such has moved me to speak in support of a teacher currently on administrative leave. In the words of Aaron Bushnell, many of us ask ourselves, what would I do if my country was committing genocide? The answer is, you're doing it right now. My great-great-grandfather left Poland with his wife and child due to anti-Jewish sentiment spreading across Europe, similar to the Islamophobic rhetoric weaponized against this teacher. All our family who stayed were murdered. After decades of normalizing hateful rhetoric, it was people who turned a blind eye to the horrors in front of them, and even worse, people willing to punish those who are against the systematic slaughter, rape, and starvation of civilians who allowed an authoritarian government to commit genocide in their own backyards. As a Jew, I've been raised from birth to recognize the signs of genocide, and now with the genocide of the Palestinian people in full motion, the voices of Jews like me raising alarm are being ignored. As a person of color, I understand the role racism has in the Western world's response to violence. And as a transgender man, I am no stranger to the mental suffering of seeing every day and experiencing myself violence against people who look like me, who live lives like me, and who are killed for simply being like me. But it pales in comparison to the suffering and dehumanization of the Palestinian people and the anguish of Muslims worldwide, all while the world sits by covering their eyes like children. Every 10 minutes, a Palestinian child in Gaza is killed. Palestinian Palestinian children don't get to cover their eyes. If you move forward with disciplinary action against this teacher simply for holding a personal day of silence for peace, you are not only telling the world our district is Islamophobic, but you are complicit in committing genocide by suppressing the actions and voices of people brave enough to stand on the right side of history. Courageous people brave enough to oppose war, occupation, colonialism, and systematic violence. Had this been a white staff member or a Jewish or non-Muslim staff member, I doubt this would be the response. A similar day of silence was held for my community, the LGBTQ community, in which multiple staff members participated using slides and whiteboards to communicate with students as well, and no disciplinary action was made. We can't cherry pick what is and is not political, especially when it suppresses the most vulnerable voices in our community. As a Jew, I wholeheartedly and passionately support the actions of this teacher, and I disagree entirely with the way the district addressed the public on this issue and feel that it violated their safety and rights. Our Muslim students and staff deserve to feel safe and affirmed by our district, teachers, and support staff that the violence and suffering experienced by Muslims around the globe is not okay. In remembrance of the Holocaust, we Jews say the phrase never again. Never again means never again for all people, Jewish, Muslim, and Palestinian alike. Peace in Gaza, peace in the West Bank, free Palestine. Thank you. Um, good evening, Superintendent Ochoa, Assistant Superintendents Hills, uh, Chambliss, Gaffney, um, Mr. Cosmos, and trustees. My name is Laura Walters. I'm a teacher at Bowditch Middle School, a SMEDA site rep, a San Mateo Foster City School District parent, and a Foster City community member. 
I'm here tonight to share that there is more good happening daily about each middle school than bad. Teachers are dedicated and caring. <clears throat> Administrators, along with student support and restorative justice TOSAs, counselors and psychologists are engaging students and handling incidents in a professional manner. When necessary, support is also provided by the district office as well as appropriate agencies. This important work keeps our middle school functioning smoothly and safely. What is happening daily on campus is encouraging and positive. My relationships with students have led to connecting conversations. In the past week, I have heard about competitive dance comp competitions and a trip to, to Japan to visit family that was indeed that indeed felt like home. I was shown a fresh set of fingernails covered in sparkling gems. There was excitement and congratulations for students on their theatrical and musical performances. One student made the A she has been working toward. Understandably this week, students are also fatigued by state CASC testing. However, they are easily revived as we look forward to weekend plans. The San Mateo Foster City School District is focused on social emotional learning and restorative justice. Through these tools, there has been improved campus safety and trust. As a school site, we encourage positive interactions and build empathy. Are we perfect? No. Are we a work in progress? Yes. Unfortunately, right now, there is great tension in parts of our world that can be felt all the way down to our own community. This can cause division among us and breed hate and racism. Sometimes the negativity can drown out all the great things that are happening. We teachers can only hope that partnering with families and standing together will remind us that we are all more alike than different. When things don't go perfectly and you hear something negative, please keep in mind that we work with children. They are our focus. We show up and tackle each day with empathy to meet our students, their families, our colleagues, where they are. I hope you, our community, can lean into the same sentiment to meet us where we are and assume positive intent. What I wish to leave you with tonight are the positive encounters that are happening daily at Bowditch Middle School. These are the things that keep me coming back and remind me why I am a teacher. Thank you. Zach Kleeman, sorry if I mispronounced that. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Zach Kleeman. I'm a current San Mateo resident and uh, a former Bowditch Middle School student. I went there from sixth to eighth grade. Um, and um, I'm here to say that um, I, um, as a community member and um, as a former student, um, support teachers' rights to um, advocate uh, for their community and advocate for peace and justice in the world. Um, as a Jew myself, I see that um, justice, that peace is inextricably linked to justice. Um, peace cannot be achieved without justice, and we cannot have justice without truth. And um, the truth is that uh, what we are seeing unfold um, in Palestine is a genocide. Um, and as the Americans who are um, fueling that, um, and as uh, for myself, as a member of the Jewish community who has unfortunately um, turned a blind eye or turned an adversarial eye to that, um, it is our duty to speak up um, for justice for those that are being affected. Um, as um, as a student, I think it's uh, what I kind of like to focus on is as a student why it's important um, to see and hear about teachers' voices um, and the value, um, the educational value that comes from um, teachers' comments and or not even comments, but see, but being able to witness the adults that you care about and the adults that you learn from um, take a stand in the world. Um, I think that that is is vital like the I don't I don't think um, you one can emphasize enough how important and how vital that is um, for students to see in their role models and in their educational models um, that um, what what matters in the world is is being talked about and what matters in the world is is being um, given that weight 
And a lot of the stuff we learn about in school has a retrospective focus. Like when we talk about history and we talk about social studies, um, it has a retrospective focus. But what we don't realize is, is what's happening um, now, we're gonna talk about in 10 years, we're gonna talk about in 20 years, we're gonna talk about in 50 years. And what's happening now is gonna shape what the world looks like in 10, 20, 50 years. And so students, I think, when they see the importance and the weight um, and the moral value of what's happening now being discussed by those educators and by those role models, then that leads to understanding of agency and empowerment of students, which I, I don't wanna speak on behalf of anybody, but from um, my dad as a teacher and from the educators that I know that that is one of the most important things to them is that they want those students to be able to go out into the world and feel like that they can be themselves and make a difference. And I think that enabling uh, peace activism is how we do that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any more public comments from inside this room? Okay. Um, can we please go to Zoom for public comment? Yes, thank you, President Proctor. Good evening, we're calling on speakers for public comment. If you would like to speak, please use the raise hand feature on the Zoom meeting platform now. Speakers will have three minutes to give their remarks. Uh, at this time, there are no raise hands, <laughs> President Proctor. Okay, we will go to item 4B, public statements related to agenda items. Persons <laughs> will be called on at the appropriate time. 4C, Foundation Committee PTA Council Reports. We have one update from the Ed Foundation, which is on Sunday, is the... I do want to uh, mention I was at Laurel uh, yesterday and one of the basketball players came to the school. So the staff brought students down to the multipurpose room and, you know, their ability to get kids excited and to work a crowd is like, wow. It, you know, so they just got really, really, the kids were so excited about it. So looking forward to that event on Sunday. Three o'clock Sunday at Arizona High School. There's staff from each and each other. Should be fun. There's both. Um, check the Ed Foundation website. For more information. Anyone online from the PTA Council or Ed Foundation wants to add anything to that or anything more? I was texted to, to give an update, so sorry. Okay, we'll go to 4D then. SMEDA, CSEA, SMFCAA updates. Good evening, board members and Superintendent Ochoa. My name is Jessica Murphy. I am a language and literacy TOSA at George Hall Elementary School, as well as supporting George Hall while our principal is out on maternity leave. At George Hall, we pride ourselves on being a kind and inclusive school. As part of our inclusion initiatives, two of our staff members are co-facilitating a new inclusion pilot program that is called Peer Inclusion Leaders for our third fourth and fifth grade students. I would like to introduce you to both Summer Letcher Smith, our school psychologist, and Brandon Balagas, our third through fifth grade SDC teacher. Good evening, members of the board, Superintendent Ochoa, and the rest of the community here. Um, my name is Summer Letcher Smith, and I'm the school psychologist at George Hall. And I'm really honored to introduce to the community our new pilot program called Inclusion Leaders for third through fifth graders. 
Um, this program was inspired by a beautiful relationship that transpired organically last year between one of our fifth grade students and another fifth grade student in our upper grade special day classroom with autism. So we wanted to create this program because we wanted to create a space where more friendships between students with different brain chemistries can form. So. Um, I am going to let um, Mr. B talk take over in a second because I lost my train of thought, but that is okay. Um, so we currently have 20 um, peer leaders in our group and the leaders were nominated by their teachers for demonstrating kindness and leadership at school. And many of our inclusion leaders are also um, neurodiverse themselves. Good evening, everyone. Um, the purpose of our program, it, we have three bullets that we've showed to students, to teachers and to families at George Hall. The first purpose is to provide students with an opportunity to increase awareness about neurodiversity within students in our peer community, and for students of different learning styles to work together and learn from each other. Second is for students to act as advocates and allies to students with unique learning needs while being given the opportunity to hold leadership positions at our school campus. A third purpose is to support the George Hall Elementary mission of providing a kind and inclusive learning environment for all students and to further the inclusion initiatives for the Sam Mateo Foster City School District. So far, the inclusion leadership program has invited the 20 students for a lunchtime session where each student was given the opportunity to speak on what inclusion meant to them. They were able to learn about different strategies and opportunities that they could use throughout the school day academically, socially, and physically to include their peers. And there have also been um, what we are calling a reverse inclusion group play opportunity for students where the third, fourth, and fifth graders are coming into my SDC classroom and are building authentic relationships with one another through group play, asking and answering questions, and just getting to know each other. So this is a community inclusion project, which means that it's gonna to continue to grow next year based on data that's collected and feedback from staff and uh, families and of course our students. So we have three brave students this evening from the program that will be answering two questions about neurodiversity and inclusion. Would our peer inclusion leaders please come up to the stage? Start with fifth grade and say your name and what grade you are, and then we'll go down the line. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Josie, and I'm in fifth grade. Hello, my name is Timothy, and I'm in fourth grade. Hello, my name is Madeline, and I am in third grade. Thank you. So our first question is, why is it important to celebrate neurodiversity? It's important to celebrate neurodiversity because everybody has good qualities and sometimes those strengths are overlooked. It's important to accept all people the way they are without trying to change them or judge them before you really know them. Celebrating neurodiversity means supporting and respecting the way we're all different. It is important to celebrate neurodiversity so everyone feels welcome and by being open to ideas from other kids we can play games in ways we never thought of and it can be lots of fun everyone everybody's brains work differently and we want to celebrate that the, the differences by understanding the simple facts it is important to celebrate neurodiversity because we are all different inside and outside and neurodiversity is just an extension of these differences we all have. Thank you, students. Okay, our last question. What can inclusion at school look like? At school, inclusivity looks like small things, like having students of all capabilities in the classroom, or big acts like the Inclusivity Leadership Program. It can look like being patient when a student experiences frustration, or having friends who may struggle with things that come easier to you but it always looks like making everyone feel welcome. Being inclusive at school means everyone who wants to play can play, and it means everyone is included in what they want to do. Being inclusive at school looks like learning about others to understand them better so they can feel understood, accepted, and included. Thank you, everyone. Great. 
Um, good evening. My name is Carrie Hazelton, and I'm the principal at San Mateo Park Elementary School. And tonight I have two community school student representatives. I have Bella, who is in fifth grade, and I have Azella, who's in second grade. In the past two years, we have been gathering input from our students, from our parents, from our staff um, to be part of a community school. Our goal for becoming a community school is to enhance our school community, our wraparound services, strengthen our home to school connection, and enrich our students' experiences. Tonight, we would like to highlight what makes San Mateo Park special. Our students are welcoming and friendly. Students are also teachers here and help teach other students. Our teachers help us learn in a fun way. Our office staff help students when they are hurt or sick. Our custodian does a lot. He keeps our school clean. He is kind and hardworking. <clears throat> we really appreciate him since he does so much. He is the best. Our school events are fun and an opportunity to be social, meet new people, and reunite with your friends. Our campus is beautiful. It has a unique design and it fits everyone's interest. Everyone can find at least one spot to play. Our, for our enrichment, we have music, art, a Lego lab, field trips, outdoor education for fifth graders, assemblies are fun and entertaining. Our after school staff are super special because they are a part of our school community. The staff are very nice and get to know all of our students. They support academics and enrichment activities. We love, we love our, our school because, because it, it is the best. best. everybody. <laughs> um, last night we had our regular monthly chapter meeting and something happened that has never happened during my presidency. An MOU was voted down. There are multiple reasons why this happened, ranging from it lacked educational experience, testing requirements, and data concerns in general. The one thing that stood out to me most, though, was that it was expressed to me that this MOU, whether intended or not, was a slap in the face for everyone who was still waiting for their reclassification results. Reclassification requests should have, sorry, reclassification requests that should have been resolved but were completely mismanaged by our human resources department. They took the time to create this position and other management ones while their classified employees waited patiently for their 1998 job descriptions to be updated. The district has had these requests in their possession since September, requests that were due for your approval back in March. CSEA has granted the district more time to review these requests since the process was messed up royally. Um, Patrick and John are currently trying to clean up the mess that was made, and we are very, very grateful for that. Um, and so thank you to both of you. Um, maybe in the future, the district could be a little more mindful of the timing of proposals. I did voice my concern when it was presented due to the, pen due to the pending reclassifications, although ended up being rejected for other reasons as well. Um, it is unfortunate that something which could have created a way for one of our employees to grow professionally did not pass. It is also really unfortunate that a large group of our administrative professionals are the ones waiting for their reclassif reclassification results. I know this being presented to them for a vote on the day they were supposed to be feel appreciated did the exact opposite. Still should have brought a kid. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. First of all, I want to thank all of the students who spoke tonight. It's always good to hear different examples of some of the things that Laura so eloquently put as the day-to-day -day interactions that we have with our students that make us what uh, our job, what we do. Um, so delightful. I, this is a time of year where there's a lot of different performances and Abbott showed a little clip of what they're doing. There's music performances, we have art shows and music shows and everything that happens at this time of year it shows all of the work that our educators do day in and day out to add life to school. 
uh, those things that are enjoyable. And I want to thank all of those, anybody who does anything like that, whether it's inclusion work, whether it's student council, everything that we are doing, uh, that teachers and staff are doing every day to add joy to uh, the school experience. Uh, we have, a, you know, an early, the way that board meetings fit, I want to uh, thank everyone for, or to, uh, sorry, I want to just mention that we have uh, appreciate, uh, the staff appreciation that's coming up in the coming month. I definitely think that, uh, you know, some of the examples that we just saw here today and what I've just mentioned are what makes you know, the staff feel appreciated when um, we do things uh, to help our, to, to enlighten, sorry, to add things to the joy of our students. I want to also want to thank the, uh, our trustees, Trustee uh, Proctor, Trustee uh, Trin, and Trustee Kim for joining a few of us MEDA leaders this past weekend um, during our leadership brunch that, from, with CTA. I think it was a smaller turnout than usual, but I think definitely between the few few C, uh, SPINA members and you, we definitely had the largest group that was there. So <laughs> thank you that for that. And I definitely look forward to continuing the conversation that we started there. And I think uh, when we have our listening session later next month um, or coming up, that our members will get a chance to share with you as well. And. I think that's, I'm going to leave it at there. Thank you for those updates. We move on to item 40 announcements. We saw the, the students from the Abbott complex, that performance, you know, with all this bright lights and a room full of people standing this clo or sitting this close to them, that was, that was impressive. Um, I also just want to thank uh, Laura for your comments. Um, just really thank you. Um, I had the opportunity to spend the day at Laurel Elementary School this week. And... Um, they were putting on a performance there for the Gold Rush. They have, they put on the performance twice in the same day. Actually, one of our teachers was just here. She just stepped out, but um, it's a combination of a couple of fourth and fifth grade teachers in the morning and then two other fourth and fifth grade teachers in the afternoon. And the amount of work and the amount of joy and the amount of preparation, and Julie, our assistant principal for Laurels here, um, it, it's a really beautiful thing to see so many families come in and observe and watch this and take the videos and take the pictures and um, just huge kudos to the staff at Laurel Elementary School. Um, I did mention earlier uh, the Harlem Wizards did send one of the players and he just put on a show. I mean, he was so natural with it. Uh, and at the end, he offered to sign anything the kids wanted and he... He did sign a couple of kids' tennis shoes, which I thought, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> I might ask my kid, hey, why does your shoe have a signature on it? But the kids were so jazzed about everything uh, that we were doing there. Um, I also just had an opportunity to uh, visit classrooms while I was there and see just so many, so many genuine, strong, committed people doing important work with our, our students. Um, and I got a chance to spend some time with our TOSAs at Laurel Elementary School and, and um, spent an hour with them talking about um, how to get more and more students connected to uh, their social emotional growth, inspired in their academics, 
um, it was an it was a wonderful, totally impromptu. I just kind of I was making the rounds around the school and saw um, a group of educators sitting. I said, "Can I bug you and sit in your meeting?" And after a little while, we started this this pretty big conversation. You know, high level, where do we want to be in five years? Kind of conversation and. Um, I just have so much respect for the work that they do, and, and I wanted to to acknowledge them. I also wanted to um, give an update on a visit I had this afternoon at Sunny Bray. Um, I got a chance to meet with the Sunny Bray staff and um, have a wonderful conversation in our Ready to Launch series. Um, just got back a little while from that, but um, the Sunny Bray staff has so much passion for the work that they want to do with community schools and um, they're so connected to one another and and supportive of one another. So kudos to that principal and to that team of educators. Just got a chance to spend a little bit of time with them. And as you know, we have a couple of resolutions coming up tonight that I'm looking forward to in recognition of our staff. Um, and, uh, and, and it's a very busy time of year for sure, but very, very exciting time of year. So those are my remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, we will move on to item five, uh, which um, I'm clicking this. I'm clicking too quick. Okay, proposed consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered by the board to be routine and will be enacted by the board in one motion in the form listed below. There will be no discussions discussion on these items prior to the board prior to the time board votes on the motion unless members of the board, staff, or, that's why I can't see, that's why I can't read. <laughs> to the time the board votes on the motion unless members of the board, staff, or public request specific items be removed in the, and discussed from the consent agenda. The superintendent and staff recommend approval of all consent items. Movement of any recommended consent items is appropriate at this time. I will just remind everyone that we've already, um, pulled 5A2, which will be a separate item. We've completely removed 5B5. And I would like to pull to discuss um, 5A9. Um, own item. Are there any other items that the board, um, anyone on the board would like to pull? Uh, President Cook, I'd like to pull 5A8. Some clerical comments. We have so far 5A8 and 5A9. Okay. Are there uh, anyone in the audience here would like to pull anything? Okay. Can we check with the Zoom audience, please, to see if there's any items from the consent and consent agenda that would they would like to pull? Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Oops. Oops. Apologies, apologies. I'm having an issue. An issue. No, we're calling, we're calling or any or attendees, any attendees to say would like they would like any items from, items from the from consent, consent agenda. agenda. Please, please uh, use raise hand feature on the Zoom meeting platform, platform now, now and state, and state the, agenda the agenda item number. Item number. President, President, Proctor, Proctor, no Proctor, raise hands. No raise hands. This moment. This moment. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we can move forward with what we have here, uh, minus 5A8 and 5A9, if we like. Or should we just go to those items first? So motion to approve the consent agenda with the removal of 5A2, 5A8, 5A9, and 5B5. Okay, thank you, Trustee Watkins for the motion and Trustee Kim for the second. Um, we'll do a roll call vote. Trustee Kim? Yes. Trustee Watkins? Yes. Trustee Kim? Yes. Trustee Dick? 
Yes, yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay, we will circle back to these items. Uh, let's go to 5A8. I don't have any objection to the substantive components, but I did have two clerical clarifications and comments. So first I wanted to confirm with district staff under the agenda titles listed as resolution 182425 in the document of file itself, it's 182324. And the first line also refers to 2425 rate. I just want to clarify which of those should be the correct. 2425. So uh, if we do, when we move forward, this document would with that correction on the resolution number. And then on the resolve clause number nine, I just want to flag, in my understanding is that these resolutions are drafted by council and I'm assuming they used the previous version. So it says the superintendent or her designee is hereby authorized, um, I assume relating to the previous superintendent. My recommendation on this is to update that terminology to a gender neutral term, so the superintendent's designee or their designee. And I would also suggest that we advise council as they move forward with prior precedents to make sure that this type of issues are addressed, um, especially with legal drafting and with the current consensus to go towards removing any gender specific language so as we update the future resolutions just want to make sure we flag that guidance for council to make sure that they check for that as they're going through and updating these terms as well but aside from those changes uh, no further comments on this okay that sounds good to me um are there any uh questions on this item from the board okay do we have any public comment in the room on this item Anyone put a comment on Zoom on 5A8? Checking. President Proctor, there are no raised hands. Okay, then we are ready for a motion. If anyone wants to make one. A motion to approve item 5A8 with the clerical edits to the title and to resolve, resolve clause nine. Thank you, Trustee Kim for the motion and Trustee Trin for the second. We'll do roll call vote. Trustee Kim? Yes. Trustee Watkins? Yes. Trustee Trin? Yes. Trustee Brooks? Yes. We'll vote yes as well. <laughs> um, we'll go to 589, which is what I want to pull. Um, so on 5A9, this, I just have a comment on this one. Um, and this was an item that we had something similar last time with a couple of items. So on change orders, this one specifically relates to Bowditch and the new drama and science buildings. Um, in Within it, it's a change order. Um, it talks about Sunnybrae pre-K classrooms as well. And so I just wanted to be clear um, on when we're, when it talks about like, in this case, it talks about Bowditch, and I don't mean to like specifically call, call out only Bowditch, but um, when we're talking about two different projects, and it talks about like the financial impact, I just want to make clear that we're like keeping separate projects separate, and that like budget tracking for, in this case, Bowditch. Absolutely, we're keeping yeah. it separate, yeah, yeah. Projects on Bowditch? <laughs> Okay, so um, in, um, maybe in the next, is it possible in the next construction update, we could get like a budget to actual by project or something so we could see how some of these bigger projects are doing? Based on all that, so we'll make sure we have that in there too. Okay. But I think it, this one, it just jumps out at me to look odd when it says Bowditch at the top and then we see on this one. I, if we'd like, we can have... So it has both Bowditch and Sunnybury listed for the total of 377. Um, so if we'd like, Amy's available too. So I can, if you have further questions, I can ask her to. Yeah, is it possible she can clarify? Why does it, like, why does it say Bowditch? Like, does it mean like Bowditch Center? Like, why does it say Bowditch Center? to Sunnybury. I'm not sure, Joe, if you can, Amy, if you can join the meeting. I can either put you on the cell phone here and you talk, or you can try the meeting and Joe can bring you forward. Let's see. 
Adding her now. Let us know, Joe, when she's there. Okay. Uh, Amy, please go ahead. Can't hear her, Joe. She's logged in. I believe I'm connected now. Okay. Good evening, board. There are subtotals on the change order that separates both um, Sunny Bray and Bowditch. The, the Sunny Bray restrooms, which is part of the Measure T scope, um, was added to this contract as a change order. This should be the final amount here. Um, but in my presentation in May, I'll be able to give you the totals by both of those scopes separately as well. Amy, can you just clarify too, I think what you're saying is that the change order, since there was a contractor, that this amount that was added for the scope for Sunny Ray was added to the Bowditch contract. And Allison's question was too, that we are tracking costs for the each project separately. So we'll be tracking the Sunray cost, but the actual contractor is permissive for us to add this change order to the overall contract because of the dollar threshold. Is that accurate? That is correct. And it's, um, we have two different funding sources, both X and T. So I can illustrate that in more detail in the presentation next month. But again, but yes, both. Yeah, that, is, what you said is correct. Yeah, clerically, clerically, the contract is for Bowditch, but it's permissive for us to do a change order for Sunny Ray under that, with that contractor. Correct. And there's two different line items in our financial system tracking both of those costs separately. Okay. Okay. I appreciate the um, clarification. Thank you. Are there thank you. any? Thank you, Amy, uh, for that. And thanks for hopping on. Um, are there any other clarifying questions on this one? Any public comment from the audience? Any public comment on Zoom? For this 5A9. Checking. President Proctor, there are no public comments at this time. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve 5A9. And um, thank you, Trustee Proctor, for the motion and Trustee Trin for the second. Um, roll call vote. Trustee Kim? Yes. Trustee Watkins? Yes. 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 Vote well, yes as well. Um, okay, so let's go to 5A2. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, here an echo. Uh, so we're really thrilled to bring forward this um, resolution and the accompanying documents to you tonight. This is permitting us to um, move forward with the bond sale that's going to fund the project of Fiesta Gardens North and North Central. Um, and so... Um, this enabled us to proceed with the bond sale uh, for those proceeds to help construct the school. So we're asking for your approval tonight. And it's a roll call vote for the resolution. Thank you. Are there any clarifying questions on 5A2? Public comment from the room. Any public comment on Zoom? Checking. There are no public comments on Zoom at this time. All right, then we can do a roll call vote. Trustee Kim? Yes. Trustee Wilkins? Yes. Trustee Trin? Yes. Trustee Brooks? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Um, okay, then that passes. Um, I think with that, we've just approved the consent agenda and some exciting um, an exciting new principal, right? At, we've approved a new principal of Brewer Island. Congratulations, Julie MacArthur. 
It, Do you want to say anything? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 I just want to say thank you, and I'm delighted and so excited. Um, 18, 19 ish years ago, I started in this district as a fourth grade teacher at Brewer Island. Um, and I'm thrilled to go back. A lot of my colleagues are still there, which I think really speaks to the program that they have at Brewer. And I'm just beyond excited to go back. It feels very much like going home. My friends showed up to support me and everything. Um, so thank you guys for the opportunity. I'm thrilled. I'm delighted. I'm just I don't even know what to say. I'm over the moon. And I do also just want to say, though, um, the Laurel staff was not expecting um, Diego to be on campus all day. And I kept getting texts like, is he still here? Like, is he still here? And they they were the Tosas were a little nervous at first, but they really appreciated the conversation. So um, I just wanted to say that since we were there. Is he still here? Yep. OK, thank you very much. We have to like take you all around Foster City and <laughs> down, down, show you off. <laughs> On to item 6A, approval of variable term, term waiver for IA. Good evening, Board of Trustees. Sorry about that. Good evening, Board of Trustees. Um, John Cosmos, I'm representing the Human Resource Department tonight. Um, the first item is approval of variable term waiver. Um, this is for an individual teacher um, and due to some of the regulations by the County of San Mateo and the CTC, um, we are advised to read the statement into record. And so I'm gonna read the language, the content um, in the agenda item and the recommendation and we will be capturing that in the minutes and submitting it to CT CTC. The California Commission on Teacher Credentialing allows districts to temporarily waive the California Basic Skills Requirement, English Learner Authorization and Professional Preparation Program for a specialist instruction credential in special education for a maximum of one year. The district was able to recruit a qualified educator to teach as a resource specialist Ivana Benice Assis is working on her ed specialist credential. However, she needs additional time to complete the requirements. Ivana Benice Assis has over 10 years of experience teaching in the Philippines. And so the recommendation is administration recommends that the board approve a one year variable term waiver for the education specialist preparation program, basic skills requirement, and the English Learner Authorization for Ivana, for Ivana Benes Assis, Certificated Teacher. Thank you very much. Do we have any clarifying questions from the board? No worries. Um, any um, public comment from the audience here? Any public comment from Zoom? Checking. President Proctor, there are no raised hands at the moment. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Trustee Kim? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Trustee Trin? Yes. Trustee Brooks? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay. 6B Adoption of Certificated Employee Appreciation Week and Day of the Teacher. So um, this is the resolution where we recognize our outstanding educators, um, uh, classified staff and certificated staff. And um, just want again to say thank you so much for the tremendous work all of our employees do for students and for each other each and every day um, for the adoption of the uh, appreciation week um, for teachers. There's a resolution and we'll be reading it. Okay. Yes, we're gonna read it. Okay, perfect. Um, is Trustee Brooks still on there? Do, Trustee Brooks, are you able to pull this up, this resolution? Yes, I have it up. <clears throat> um, 
All right. Well, why don't we start with Trustee Kim and go like this way and we'll and we'll go, we'll just like go around paragraph by paragraph. So you start with the first paragraph. I'm sorry. What was that? And the, par the first paragraph. Okay. You get to Trust Trustee Brooks, you're gonna be after Trustee Trin. It's this is like a coordinated effort. Here we go. All right, San Mateo Foster City School District Resolution Number 16, 24 Certificated Employee Appreciation Week on May 6th through 10th, 2024, and Day of the Teacher on May 7th, 2024. Whereas the week of May 6th through 10th, 2024 has been designated as Certificated Employee Appreciation Week and May 7th, 2024 as Day of the Teacher and... Whereas San Mateo Foster City School District teachers and certificated staff have committed to continuous learning by participating in expanded summer and school year professional development and content such as foundational literacy, effective strategies to support multilingual and special education students, mathematics, implicit bias, and restorative practices, and... San Mateo Foster City School District teachers and certificated staff have committed to building positive and safe classrooms and schools by listening to students, engaging families, making home visits, teaching social emotional learning lessons, connecting families to resources and supporting colleagues and. San Mateo Foster City School District teachers and certificated staff have gone above and beyond by tutoring students, teaching after school and during school vacations and participating in leadership teams and. Whereas San Mateo Foster City School District certificated support staff and recognized for assuming responsibilities as coaches and athletic directors, LPAC testing coordinators and PTA, school site council and LPAC representatives to provide a robust school experience for students and San Mateo Foster City School District teachers and certificated staff embrace and prepare for the future by serving on committees and leading affinity groups and whereas San Mateo Foster City School District recognizes that these are only a sample of ways that our dedicated educators positively impact students, staff, families, and the community and Tail Foster City School District community recognizes the extraordinary commitment, hard work, and dedication of its certificated staff in educating children and supporting families. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees extends its sincere appreciation and gratitude to the San Mateo Foster City School District Certificate of Staff and does hereby pr proclaim the week of May 6 to 10 as Certificated Staff Appreciation Week and May 7 as Day of the Teacher and... Be it further resolved that the San Mateo Foster City School District Board of Trustees strongly encourages all members of our community to join them in personally expressing appreciation to our teachers and certificated staff for their dedication and their work. Um, well, do we have any Clarifying questions on this item. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any public comment on this item in the room? On Zoom, any public comment? Checking. Um, there are no uh, raised hands at the moment. Okay. Any board comments? Okay. Board comments? make a quick comment. Um, you know, I think we've said this a couple of times over the last couple of meetings, um, well, maybe last couple of years, um, but, you know, there's, the, I know that this board um, has asked a lot of our teachers and staff um, and pushed a lot to really ensure that we're meeting the needs of all of our students, which at the end of the day comes down to what's happening in the classroom and, you know, requires all of our, you know, educators to make adjustments. And um, so I just want to kind of acknowledge that again and thank all of you for kind of going along with the ride and making sure that, you know, um, we're just making the adjustments needed to best support our students and for being honest about that experience as, as it's kind of ebbed and flowed over the years. Um, and 
Yeah, I know. I know that it's been a lot. And so we're just really appreciative. Um, I think, you know, seeing so many of our it's like the perfect day to have a resolution like this and to see, you know, so many of the students in our schools here um, just articulating the ways in which um, what's happening at our school sites is impacting them and their ability to get up here and you know, lead a performance in front of a, you know, room full of 50 adults and then other students just being able to talk about the power of inclusion and understanding the differences, um, you know, in their peers and their appreciation around that. And so I think it's just a testament to all the work that's happening every day on site. So just immense gratitude to all of you. Um, I was thinking, I was like, you know, teaching is the hardest job I've ever had. And then I was like, and then I became a mom and that's definitely a little bit harder, but still when you talk about like your day job, being a teacher is for sure. Like I just uh, immense gratitude to all of you. Thank you so much. Um, I will just also briefly thank everybody for everything you do. And if you don't feel the appreciation every single day, I'm just glad that we have this weekend day to, um, you know, spoil you all. Um, well, hopefully you all feel spoiled. And I know that a lot of schools um, do this differently um, for everybody, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice week to just show our appreciation for what you all do every day. And, and um, like Shara said, we, we do ask a lot of you all, but um, just thank you for everything you do. I, we just got off a couple of school site visits and just going and seeing the classrooms. I know that every single parent doesn't get a chance to go into classrooms, but seeing what you do every day and seeing students learning and doing the programs that we talk about here on the school board and, and um, programs that we that we approve and curriculum that we approve, but seeing it in action and seeing teachers like, you know, putting in the work and doing and 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 doing the doing all that, it really, it really does um it really makes what we do here up here so worthwhile. And and I know that, you know, we'll sit up here and say like, oh, you know, we're seeing the results, it's so great. And and we talked about this on on um, on the weekend that, you know, we'll sit up here and say like, oh, it's so great, it's so great. And we will hear feedback that, you know, it's not always going as great as you guys think it's going. It's, you know, it's a whole lot of hard work and you're asking a lot of us. So, you know, we do recognize that and just thank you for for really all of all that you do. And um, it's, it's it, we can't say thank you enough. So just appreciate everything you do. I did look up when is Mother's Day. It's right after um, you roll. For those of you that are teachers and moms, you roll right into Mother's Day right after teacher appreciate is yeah right after the appreciation week. So, anyways, thank you. Um, I want um sorry, but also call out especially um the non teacher certificated staff that are on campus every day. Um, really supporting our students in so many different ways outside of the classroom um, or sometimes inside of it, you know, whether it's TOSAs, restorative justice TOSAs and school psychologists and counselors and um, all of these other cer certificated staff. I know that, um, you know, we talk a lot about teachers and they definitely deserve, you know, all the praise that they get, but I wanted to specifically shout out the non-teacher um, certificated staff as well. Thank you so much. Motion to approve this resolution. Trustee Watkins for the motion and Trustee Kim for the second. Will you roll call a vote? Um, Trustee Kim. Yes. Trustee Watkins. Yes. Trustee Trin. Yes. Trustee Brooks. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, 6C, Adoption of Classified School Employee Appreciation Week. So again, um, just to recognize our classified staff for the amazing they, work they do with students um, and supporting um, each other every single day, there's our resolution that our board will be reading as well. Thank you. Same order. The school district resolution number 17, 20 through 24, classified school employee appreciation week, May 19th through 25th, 2024. Whereas the week of May 19th to 25th, 2024 has been designated as classified school employee appreciation week. 
end. Whereas our classified employees bring their expertise, enthusiasm, and heart every day for students, staff, and families, and classified staff support students and families by welcoming them with a warm smile, providing translation during meetings and managing independent study work, and Whereas San Mateo Foster City School District classified staff support students' social, emotional, academic, and physical well being by providing high quality childcare in the Annex program, conducting LPAC testing for students, assisting students during sensory breaks, and serving nutritious meals, and whereas classified staff create a safe environment and foster an all in mentality for our school campuses. The custodial and maintenance team keep sites clean and attractive, and uh, nursing staff help students stay healthy and, and they can attend school. And whereas San Mateo Foster City School District classified staff go above and beyond the call of duty by making home visits, delivering books and instructional materials to students in the evenings, and Classified staff have stretched themselves professionally to learn new technology skills and participate in monthly training to learn behavior intervention strategies and. Whereas San Mateo Foster City School District classified staff have been role models for students by saying yes when anyone asks for help, showing empathy and kindness to others and through their can-do attitude when faced with difficulty and. The San Mateo Foster City School District recognizes that these are only a few examples of the classified staff's dedication and commitment to students and. Whereas the San Mateo Foster City School District community recognizes the extraordinary undertaking and hard work of its classified staff and educating its children. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees extends its sincere appreciation and gratitude to the San Mateo Foster City School District's classified staff and proclaim the week of May 19th through 25th, 2024, as Classified School Employee Appreciation Week. And be it further resolved that the San Mateo Foster City School District Board of Trustees strongly encourages all members of our community to join them in personally expressing appreciation to our classified staff for their dedication and commitment to children. Thank you. Any clarifying questions on this item? Any public comment from the room? Any public comment on Zoom? Checking. There are no no <clears throat> excuse me. There are no raised hands at this time. Okay, bringing it back for board comments. I'll just quickly say um, again, thank you to all the classified staff. Um, we, there's, you know, they work in so many different kinds of positions and um, it really just takes um, a village to, you know, take care of our schools, to keep things running smoothly, um, you know, to check on attendance and, you know, make, make sure that everything's going um, well there. And uh, I just really appreciate what all the staff are doing and they really um, do so much to develop and um, foster a welcoming um, culture on campus. And I just really appreciate everything they do. Yeah, just just echo appreciation for our classified employees. You know, and I was made the comment around, I think our board has asked a lot of our teachers um, I, I, maybe we have with, with some of our classified staff as well, but I also think like the world and has asked a lot, right? Like I think about back to COVID and I think about when, um, you know, a lot of our classified staff members were the first people that went back to start serving meals to families and kids that needed them and, um, you know, to start providing uh, different supports to kids and bringing and when kids first started coming back on campus. And, and I think a, a lot of the some of the needs and additional supports that our students and families have required since all of that. Um, you know, a lot of that, um, a lot of a lot of our classified staff and employees have really stepped up in, in many, many ways. Um, you know, this kind of all in that's in the resolution, I think is like one, you know, very, very true. And so um, I just, you know, want to extend my, my appreciation to everyone. Um, and, you know, as Trustee Proctor said about our certificated resolution, I think, you know, there are 
um, not, I know that this appreciation is not felt every day. And so I think, you know, we can continue to think, to work on what it means for that, to, for it to feel like that every day, but, um, this is an opportunity for us to give an extra nod to how much we truly do appreciate the work that, um, everyone's doing. Thank you so much. I just want to echo all the comments from my trustees on both resolutions and just kind of pulling both of them together. I think long before I became a trustee as a parent in the district, my children attended three different schools in the district. I think even from that perspective, I had such tremendous appreciation for everything that our staff does across the board, especially during COVID, but especially in coming out of that as well. I think we all feel very grateful to be in a district where things are not perfect as we've talked about, but as we're constantly working towards this kind of uh, building this team together. And so I know when it comes to these resolutions, it can feel a little bit tried. It can feel like we're talking about one week. And obviously, you know, everyone here in this room and in this community appreciates everything that our staff does year round. Um, but I just really want to emphasize that we're very much keenly grateful for the fact that every policy, you know, piece that we celebrate up here, every success we talk about in district is coming directly from our staff who are taking care of our kids. And I know the board here is also committed to making sure that we do right by our staff to make sure that we can keep moving the district in the direction that it's going. Just want to echo that appreciation, both from our board and from myself as a trustee and as a parent, just how much we appreciate everything that our staff does. Yeah, I would just add that um, I think for, uh, for me, I think the classified staff, oftentimes they're the first face you see or um, they kind of set the tone sometimes on campus. So, you know, you may enter the office and this is the person that welcomes you to the campus or you may walk around a campus and it's the custodian giving a high five to a student or, um, you know, somebody that's um, supervising at recess or something. So it's like, it's not always, it, they're not in a classroom, but they're out there kind of giving that feel that the school is welcoming and fun and a safe place. And so um, I think that they're, they're in a really important piece to making a school culture um, what it is. And so I just wanna you know, echo what everybody else has said, but just really show some appreciation for um, what they bring to our school district and, um, and thank them for everything they do and, um, you know, Cheers to them and I appreciate them and want to celebrate their appreciation week as well. So thank you. Ready for a motion if there's nothing else. Motion to approve the classified resolution. Trustee Watkins for the motion and Trustee Chin for the second. Um, we'll do roll call. Trustee Kim? Yes. Trustee Watkins? Yes. Trustee Chin? Yes. Trustee Brooks? Yes. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. We are on. Um, 6D. I had, oh, sorry. Approval of resolution for reduction of classified services for 2024-2025. So this is our annual resolution for the reduction of classified services. We've reviewed the reductions with our CSEA partners and bring it forward for your approval tonight. Questions on this item? Okay, are there, is there any public comment from the room in here? Any public comment on Zoom? Checking, checking. There are no there raised are no hands, raised hands, hands at the moment. moment. All right, um, any board comments on this item? All right, then ready for a motion if anyone would like to make one. Motion to approve this resolution. Uh, 
All right, thank you, Trustee Trin for the motion and Trustee Kim for the second. We will do roll call vote. Trustee Kim. Yes. Trustee Watkins. Yes. Trustee Trin. Yes. Trustee Brooks. Yes. Yes. And I will vote yes as well. Okay, moving on to item seven, board member statements and requests for future agenda items. My statement is this is the shortest meeting ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, my request is, um, so a few years ago, I think it has been at this point, we um, talked about PTA funding and looked at some information around kind of how much PTA funding goes to each of our schools and kind of the disparity that exists there. And I'm interested in having that discussion again. Um, and bringing back kind of current data around where that sits on an annual basis or where it has sat on an annual basis over the past couple of years, in addition to getting some intel around some of the policies that exist locally in terms of how varying districts in our community sort of address disparity in PTA funding. So curious to see if other folks are interested and if so, if we could bring that back in a month or two, that'd be great. like to kind of add on to that point i'm curious to see also maybe um maybe we could review just overall school funding so that we also get a picture of like i know that certain schools have additional funding from other sources and so um i think we should talk about the pta piece but also like there's we want to see like the whole picture I know Trustee Watkins just talked about a short meeting, but I just wanted to run through a few quick acknowledgements like I like to do. Um, first off, I just wanted to thank, again, Smita and California Teachers Association for hosting us this weekend um, with President Proctor and Trustee Trin. It was great to be there, not just with our teachers and other labor leaders, but also with trustees and educators from across the district. Um, being all in one room, talking about best practices, talking about how we can work better together as local leaders and educators. It was just a very great conversation. And uh, as Kathy pointed out, we had a very strong team represented in one of the biggest uh, delegations in the room. And that's something I hopefully we can continue on doing. Um, I also just want to thank the lead team that hosted Trustee Trent and I earlier this month um, for a board community workshop on a multilingual master plan. And then also for Bowditch, Brewer Island, and Sunnybrae that hosted uh, several of our trustees earlier this week for our school visitations. And the one special shout out I just wanted to add is for uh, Principal um, Angie Estonina at College Park. She was recently honored with the prestigious Principal of the Year 2024 Award by the California Association of Asian and Pacific Islander Leaders in Education. May is also Asian American Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So great timing on that part. Just wanna congratulate Principal Estonina on that recognition. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I had a couple of acknowledgements also to just say. Um, I also wanted to just also thank um, the SMEDA leaders that invited us to the CTA event on Saturday. So thank you, Kathy and Gabe and Tara Dixon for having us there. Um, also, thank you to Blue Island, Sunny Bray, and Bowditch for having us at the school site visits. It was great to be there. Um, I wanted to just share a little bit about my spring break trip to Washington, D.C. with 68 eighth graders from Bowditch. <laughs> just for a minute, I wanted to just tell you all about it. So um, I took on leading the trip this year to Washington, D.C. with seven other um, parents and just wanted to, first of all, acknowledge the teachers in the room that are from Bowditch and say what wonderful students you have. They were all super well behaved. Um, we did get one little criticism from the tour guides that said, um, you guys are not teachers and you're not disciplining the kids. You're not doing it right because um, we're all parents and we're taught you don't you don't discipline other people's kids. Like we all know that we don't we don't do that hands off, right? So we didn't tell them like, hey, you need to listen to the tour guides and you need to focus because we just you know, we all didn't do that. So that was our one little criticism that we got. But the kids were really well behaved. It was a, a trip of a lifetime for me and for the other parents to just get to see teenagers doing their thing. Um, my, my kids would have never wanted me to go on the trip 
um, the only reason I got to go was because I said if I didn't go, the trip wouldn't have happened. And so um, I was glad I got to go. But anyways, just wanted to say that it was a great time. If anyone gets a chance to go, it was worth it. And um, we got to see the sights. It was exhausting. It was a five-day trip. It was a red-eye flight. When, like the second we landed in Washington, D.C., we hit the ground and just saw everything, learned a lot. And um, it was awesome. So Bowditch, um, and I, I'm sure all of our middle schools, all of our middle school eighth graders are awesome. I just happened to get a, five days of 24-7 exposure to the kids at Bowditch, and they were cool. They were great. So, um, and I, and on our school site visit the other day to Bowditch, I got hugs. I got, hey, Allison, it's nice to see you again. So now I'm like, I'm cool with some eighth graders, so, which is cool. Anyways, so that was my spring break trip. Um, but that's my update for today, so... Anything else on this item? Okay. President Proctor, I would like to make a statement, please. Uh, first, I wanna uh, say thank you to our classified and our certificated employees. You are much appreciated uh, for the work that you do. We are proud of you. Um, it just takes a village to do what we do. And I feel like I'm very lucky to be a part of a district that I feel have the dream team. I feel like we do have our issues that we work through, but very appreciative of all that we are accomplishing and the goals that we have set and are moving toward. I also would like to um, uh, speak about the trip that we made to DC to um, uh to um, advocate for legislation um, at the Capitol with uh, our coast to coast uh, statewide um, advocacy in DC. It was a great experience. And I can say that there's a lot to come and hopefully uh, we can get more involved in that movement. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item eight. Um, is future meeting dates. They are listed on the agenda. The next one up is May 9th, which is a study session on community schools. Uh, item nine is public comments on closed session items. Do we have any public comment in the room? Public comment on Zoom? Checking. Um, no raise hands at the moment, President Proctor. Go to item 10. We're going to recess to close session now. So we'll see you guys later. Thank you. Hi everyone, we are reconvening to open session and with item 11A, report of closed session. So we have two items to report. Um, by a vote of five to zero, 17 temporary cert certificated employees were released as certificated employees effective the close of the 2023-2024 school year. And the second item is the board took action in closed session by unanimous vote of all trustees present to immediately suspend without pay and dismiss a permanent certificated employee. Is, that concludes item 11A. And now we are on item 12, adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. Trustee Trin for the motion and Trustee Watkins for the second. We will do roll call vote. Trustee Kim. Yes. Trustee Watkins. Yes. Yes. I don't think Trustee Brooks, Brooks is on any longer, so I will vote yes. So we have we are adjourned at eight oh one p.m. Thank you. <laughs>